Forbes India presents Comsco Digital Dialogues Powering Business. Welcome to Forbes India presents Comscope Digital Dialogues Powering Business. I'm Ridhu Bhandari. Well, the disruption caused by COVID-19 in our lives over the last couple of months has pushed us to embrace technology like never before in the way we live, work and play. Business, collaboration, communication, sports, entertainment, everything is heavily dependent on technology today. And powering all of this seamlessly is digital infrastructure and big data that needs to be stored, managed, analyzed and harnessed efficiently and intelligently to create true value for all of us. So our focus today is on building future-proof digital infrastructure and future-proof enterprises. And for this, I'm joined by a panel of very eminent thought leaders today. Let me welcome them. Nitin Mishra, Senior Executive Vice President and Chief Product Officer at NTT NetMagic. K.C. Tavaria, CIO at BSC India. Shriti Gopinathan, CIO at Lupin. Saurabh Chatterjee, President and Head of IT, Web Sales and Travel at Bajaj Alliance General Insurance. Maila Raya JN, Director of Sales, Enterprise Business, India and Sark at Comscope. And Kanish Kaur, Founder of the India Future Foundation. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks very much for joining us here today. Maybe I'd like to open the conversation with Nitin. Uh, let me begin by asking you to give us a broad picture of some of the trends that you've observed over the last couple of months uh, as far as data and data centers are uh, concerned, in particular uh, on-premises and remote as well. How have enterprises really been dealing with the whole COVID-19 impact? So one thing uh, our customers have, enterprises and customers have realized uh, that you know, during a pandemic kind of a scenario, I think it's, it is best to be uh, hosted in a data center. Uh, see, because uh, on premise there are still restrictions how you can reach it, uh, reach uh, that data center. Uh, but uh, data center services, as as such by government, was allowed as essential services. So, which really allowed uh, data center providers to really work seamlessly and you know ensure the uptime and uh, for the data centers. So, I think uh, clearly we see that you know uh, although there has been a major uh, migration uh, over the last uh, couple of years from on premise to uh, enterprises, but this particular event has further accelerated uh, for the customers and enterprises who had not taken that decision so far. Uh, second thing we observed is, I think, a sudden burst in network requirements, uh, thanks to people moving uh, work from home. Uh, so some of the applications which could be uh, earlier uh, accessed from private network had to be accessed from public network. So clearly, we saw a sudden surge. And this is a scenario where our data centers are prepared to serve uh, to the customers and you know, take care of such burst. Third aspect was, you know, uh, the, the manageability. I think that is where the whole cloud uh, adoption, uh, which again has been, uh, you know, coming mainstay over the last few years, but this has further uh, accentuated that, uh, uh, you know, uh, whole thinking uh, of uh, migrating to the cloud. And fourth, I, I would say, is the resiliency part, because uh, customers have realized that there could be such uh, times when uh, one may not be able to access uh, the the data uh, so there, there there has to be a backup uh, option available uh, there could be uh, lockdowns which are uh, specific containment area etc which can uh, restrict things so apart from the natural disasters which everybody was used to and what dr was planned for uh, now clearly they realize that you know this is another new uh, situation for which uh, having a dr and a resiliency uh, becomes yeah. critical uh, let me also bring in Mylar here. Mylar, Nitin has given us a broad picture, but in these unprecedented times, how can enterprises uh, really efficiently manage data and data centers to ensure that they aid analytics leading to better business intelligence and growth strategies because uh, these are rather tough times for all enterprises. The data center industry, one thing which has to keep in mind, uh, the three focus areas in order to thrive. One was the simplicity. Uh, reliability and adaptability. A simple networking portfolio often provides benefits that are best uh, understood when they aren't there. So a single network to support multiple applications, power and data could be on the same media running. A solution that is easy to uh, design and easy to deploy. So these are some of the hallmarks of the simplicity uh, and are at the core of any effective infrastructure approach. 
uh, looking at increasingly fueled by the strong growth that we have started seeing the cloud adoption we are seeing customers especially from the communication service provider sector who are transitioning into the software defined networks and also on the nfe to jump start agility and drive greater efficiencies and make savings through their entire throughout their networks and accordingly we have seen sdn remains top of the agenda uh, when looking at the investments that we have started seeing within the industry is uh, realizing the benefits of these however creates also unique challenges among which is getting into various and diverse hardware and software components uh, in the network to talk to one another in order to manage uh, different services and capabilities seamlessly and efficiently uh, enterprises are deploying these architectures of sdn and also looking and monitoring management of critical data center facilities including power pooling network including their structured cabling requirements this approach is bringing in a lot of integration and automation which we have never seen before the insights that achieved aid analytics and also thereby efficiency performance and optimization the trend is consistently ensuring very high level of standardization availability and also manageability which is going to have a very positive impact on the business growth speed and agility is let me also ask shriji covid 19 has perhaps been the biggest test of resilience and agility for all kinds of enterprises uh, across the world so in these times what has kept lupin in good stead where are you in your digital transformation journey right now what role did emerging technologies like ai or cloud or automation play in managing supply chains on the manufacturing floor uh, in terms of r&d especially in those successive months of a lockdown and how critical was your digital infrastructure to your business continuity in these times yeah so basically what covid 19 has uh, done is as nitin earlier mentioned we had to keep the business continuity that was the priority um so in terms of adoption of digital technologies um there were a lot of um, movement in terms of people who are sitting on the fence who moved to the right side of the fence yeah so that is the biggest uh, impact which covid had as far as uh, you know digitization is concerned as far as technology is concerned um i don't think ai ml per se played uh, any significant role in this few months in terms of keeping the business afloat it was about providing connectivity to people providing devices to people making sure systems uh, are up and running um and then you know engaging in discussions of accelerating the digital transformation um so there in that last way that i mentioned uh, all those new technology new age technologies has a significant role to play um so whether it is uh, increasing the efficiencies of uh, manufacturing operations or in in terms of engaging with the uh, customers whether it's doctors patients uh, pharmacies um or whether it is having an integrated supply chain where it is important uh, to um uh, you know understand how all the different building blocks of that business planning exercise connects well together how intelligent can you make in terms of the heuristics and algorithms that is needed um to make sure that the demand and the supply is tied up as uh, you know accurately as possible so those are the areas where uh, the modern technologies that you mentioned will play but as far as covid-19 is concerned as i said it was adoption which was got accelerated uh, in terms of collaboration in terms of devices in terms of acceptability in they have to think like okay going digital is going to uh, help us uh, you know do things wherever you are um and and that is an important thing to do so that is what has happened in lupin and i think in all the all the other companies as well kc i know that you played a leading role in transforming the bsc into a very tech savvy and customer friendly exchange give us a sense of the key pillars of your digital infrastructure today and the journey that data has really had from the traditional exchange to digital technologies uh, at bsc and how that has really transformed trading on the exchange as a poc we already had working though for a stock exchange working remotely was a big no no like in the pre covid days but just for an extreme extreme emergency we already had a plan the worst case happens like but the stock exchange has to start bod has to start what happens in case of a floods or 
or X Y Z region like Bombay. If you are in Bombay, person like you know what is the situation during monsoons. Nothing. There is nothing predictability of person reaching office. Like everything else works except transport. So how do you? So yet keeping that contingency in mind, we still had some automation and processes in place where we could have a few people get uh, connected to the exchange and start the basic operations. The trading has to start. The risk man and everything has to start. The machinery has to be in order. So we already had that in place. Only thing is we didn't. What we didn't have was this, this mass scale rollout of like having all. Say thousand plus or two thousand people working from remote. Okay, so the fastest thing, the biggest challenge was getting, uh, giving connectivity to all these people, building up the basic uh, workflows and controls. See, very important thing was it's not just was a mass rollout. It has to be very very controlled rollout because we had to make sure that while it is we are able to execute, we also wanted to show make sure that there is no security lapse. we never wanted to take security for granted and that's why we went out very very cautiously but at the same time we made things very simple we never took out the data outside the office we, we followed the basic principle is let all the compute remain within the organization within the organization building just help from a remote terminal get you connect to your basic uh, desktop that you are working with so that your operations your efficiency does not go down because Lot of people I have heard in the industry when they took their desktops home, they had major performance issues in their application. The applications were crashing. We ensured that by not taking out any work like compute from outside our offices, we have ensured that there was absolutely no performance issues. Like the only challenge was just getting connected to uh, to your desktop. And today people are talking big time about VDI and lot of very big VDI infrastructure. We did something very simple. it was a home grown solution we made that thing up and running within one week and we were very very successful in doing that forbes india presents comsco digital dialogues powering business digital dialogues powering business anish if i can bring you in here what about those millions of enterprises in our country that had really not invested so much into digital technologies the traditional small and medium business sector that had really uh, uh, you know a lot of it was perhaps in nascent stages of digital transformation or perhaps even just discovering the internet and what it can do for them uh, in large parts of the country uh, how should those enterprises now uh many of them have been wiped out in fact but those who remain and those who are fighting to stay alive how should they be navigating the future as we step into this whole new normal that we're talking about thank you nidu a very valid point uh, made out, made by you uh so today you know if you are not online you're out of business first while it used to happen was that online was powering offline businesses but today it's the online businesses which is going to take the next leap forward the the economic growth of this country today depends upon how our online businesses are going to perform some of the online businesses which were erstwhile ignored are the new reality so if you look at uh, you know we had around 50% of our restaurants getting closed and these restaurants were actually fighting with some of the e-commerce or e-food delivery apps but if you look at today the e food delivery apps or the e commerce businesses are lifeline for them today so it's created a new model for collaboration or if you look at the hotel industry right they are they were having major issues with the aggregators the online aggregators but this requires collaboration so there is a new partnership which has come into picture and the time is right for offline businesses to adapt online and for that they need to use the power of data centers the you know they used to, you need to use the power of cloud and i think uh, there are multiple innovations which are happening and as our prime minister has rightly called out about us becoming atmanirbhar this is the time where we need to collaborate shake hands and use powerful technologies so you know using crm using cloud using digital marketing tools is very much important so it's important that some of these offline businesses get into partnerships and alliances with leading services providers and if you look at there are new services being launched by service providers specifically targeting towards smes and medium scale businesses now these collaborations these partnerships are key to success right now this will only enable that how much we are able to take things forward 
and we are able to sustain and build continuity. Sort of, if I may bring you in as well, as an insurance company, as a B two C company that has humongous amounts of data traveling, uh, you know, in transactions every minute. Of course, storage and retrieval is important. Give us a sense of how data analytics is. Playing a crucial role in enhancing the customer experience. Also, there has been a significant shift of consumer preferences during the pandemic, moving towards digital channels. Uh, does that then change your whole uh, strategy and everything that you wish to get out of data? How are you preparing for the future? I would say is look at it from a B two C company, the consumer side. What is happening is there is a percentage of data. If I would say like ninety percent of the data was getting generated within the enterprise. now i am seeing almost 30% 40% of the data getting generated out of the enterprise which means you know i may even go out to say that corporate compute you know may move to the edge right what is what is happening is a there is an explosion of data on one side right we have lots of insights that we are generating from not just the data that we have but from you know whether it is the you know the user mobiles or the kind of you know the endpoints that they are using or it is uh, we as an insurance company you know not just are on the b2c side but b2b2c sides so we insure factories right so there's a lot of iot data coming in as as more you know that they are getting automated so bunch of this data is coming in what is happening is from our our standpoint there is a need to the data is getting denser the data is getting heavier which means the compute you know uh, the 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 storage and compute need to be closer to each other you cannot keep on you know traveling that you know as 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 a as a as a metaphor right you cannot keep on traveling you know from one place to other which which uh, provides that ability from a edge standpoint to come up the other thing that is happening is also the fraud element insurance companies the other element of we are supposed to pay claims and that is our fiduciary responsibility right but how were Five percent, or you know, of that percentage of the fraudulent claims that come in, destroys the experience for ninety-five percent. And this is where again data is playing a very interesting role. It is not just the raw raw data, but what we process and the models that we are running to be able to provide a better experience from an end consumer standpoint. And this is where, uh, but I strongly believe corporate compute will move to the edge over a period of time. This is already happening. And there is just an explosion of external data uh, that I'm seeing in the enterprise. My lord, as we step into the future and keep pace with technology uh, in India, of course, we are waiting for the whole 5G rollout. How is this rollout of 5G and the resultant hyper connectivity likely to impact data centers in the future? Yeah, you know, the 5G has been a buzzword across. So, with the 5G rollout, potentially it has a great impact on many industries. there it could be manufacturing automation healthcare uh, finance transportation uh, including the biggest at the heart of the data center on the whole uh, the trend has been really good for the data center businesses is uh, if you go back and look at the three key attributes for the 5g high bandwidth mobile broadband the uh, second one is the support for massive machine to machine communication With, with a density of very high up to 100000 connections per square kilometers expected to be and the most important one is the ultra low latency communication enabling almost sub 10 milliseconds latency for mission critical applications how do a connected car get on to the connectivity making the right decision could be in a traffic like that of a mumbai delhi or a bangalore is so uh, it plays a highly critical role on the 5g rollout so data centers are now beginning to consider and anticipate the entire change of where the entire data processing storage need to occur they are also examining on how much of network bandwidth is going to be required between the 5g nodes and the edge data centers which is closer to the equipment that's actually getting communicated is as well as the network connections to smaller regionalized and centralized data centers which will be the future and the question that you asked about hyperscale cloud service providers will play an increasingly an important role as the 5g applications develop while we are talking of data let me also ask uh, nitin about the potential of india as a data center destination for the world uh, the government did allocate about 8000 crore rupees uh, in budget 2020 for setting up data centers and it parks across the country in the next 5 years beyond infrastructure 
what sort of policy measures are required to make this an attractive proposition uh, so that you know the world sets up its data centers in india how can we become far more competitive yeah so uh, there are uh, clearly you know india has some advantages in terms of the manpower even from a cost effectiveness perspective uh, so we uh, do see uh, currently we are seeing two kinds of uh, you know uh, external customers who are using uh, data centers here one is obviously to serve indian market uh, and uh, also because of the you know government conditions of uh, data localization and things like that uh, beyond that we also see uh, some nearby you know right from middle east to uh, could be even thailand and these locations using uh, india as a dr uh, location uh, so uh, clearly i think you know there is uh, there there is potential in uh, uh, building data centers for, to serve uh, outside uh, markets some of the things which government really look at look at it is obviously i think they have been proactive recently in engaging uh, with the service providers uh, in terms of taking their inputs and it's a good uh, initiative to uh, on the it on the parts data center parts uh, with uh, the ready made facilities because that really helps uh, to roll out these facilities much faster thank you very much gentlemen for joining us here today and sharing those absolutely innovative ideas into building future proof digital infrastructure and constantly remaining on that transformation journey appreciate you joining us forbes india presents comscope digital dialogues powering business